you start yes sir uh, good morning all so today we are going to look on mutual funds we'll be looking into the various characteristics of and laying the settlement available for mutual funds so giving you an overview on what is mutual funds uh, it, i would say that it is a mechanism uh, for pooling resources that is for individuals it may not be possible that we can diversify our portfolio into various schemes like we, we may not be able to invest in the various financial instruments available in the indian market so we entrust an a person or a trust function really mutual funds is that you can read it from the size it's a basket of securities it consists of various financial instruments and uh, giving you a brief about the mutual funds industry in India. Uh, this was a particularly introduced in India in the year 1963 by uh, Unit Trust of India, UTI. It was introduced in by UTI. Public sector companies, I mean, mark my words, public sector companies started setting up mutual funds in the year 1987 when SBI mutual fund company was introduced. And uh, after that, many uh, public sector companies like Punjab National Bank, 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 Bank Mutual Funds, Bank of Baroda Mutual Funds, etc. have been uh, implemented. And uh, it was in the year 1993, it was the first time that a private sector mutual funds was established. That was, it was established in the name Kothari Pioneer. And this was the first of its kind. But uh, this Kothari Pioneer later on become uh, Franklin Templeton and is one of the major mutual fund funds available in India right now. And as of now, India, we have 44 mutual funds in india around 44 so this is about a brief on mutual funds history or mutual funds industry in india so coming into the slides so uh, we sebi has re, uh, kept uh, regulations for this that is sebi mutual funds regulation 1996 so after the first private sector mutual fund after three years they have set up sebi has all set up a mutual funds regulations and they in that regulations they have defined mutual funds as a fund established in the form of trust to raise monies through the sale of units to the public or a section of the public under one or more schemes for investing in securities including money market instruments or gold or gold related instruments or real estate assets so here the thing is that uh, while reading this you need to uh, mark few lines that is it is in the form of a trust so that is a very important line so mutual funds are established in form of trusts second thing is that in equity, we say shares, but here we say through the sale of units. In mutual funds, we call it as units. And the third thing is that in if it is equity, we only consider if it is uh, we only consider the share market. But here we have a basket. That is, we have equity, we have money market instruments, we have gold, we have gold related instruments, we have real estate assets. So it is a combination of all of these. So mutual funds is a we can say it is a as per a vehicle or a special purpose vehicle SPV that collects money from investors to buy securities and uh, there is a for fund manager and we uh, these the investors who invest in mutual funds have a common objective and they and these fund managers decides how to invest this money pooled from the investors so here in this slide you can see a cycle in which you, it gives you an idea about how this thing works here we have investors, they pool in their money and entrust the fund manager to invest in securities. And this fund manager invests in securities and he generates the income. And again, this gen in, in income generated is uh, distributed as returns to the investors. So this is a basic cycle of how mutual funds works. So here in this diagram, you will see that it is a in mutual fund is a well diversified portfolio that is you have equity you have debt you have money market instruments even other instruments like we have real estate funds or even gold funds because uh, gold funds is that uh, it was a pri previous concept that we need to buy physical gold if you need to buy after these mutual funds and we have gold funds and all it is not necessary that we buy physical gold and keep it we can keep it in even in we can keep store or we can buy gold in electronic format and we get returns based on this diversified portfolio. So, so this uh, screen is a slide shows uh, regulatory framework, how a mutual fund works in India. 
so as far as mutual funds i said that it is, it is not only includes uh, stock market or share so something it includes other ma money market instruments only. so we have rbi also so capital market instruments are governed by sebi we have rbi who regulates the money market instruments or short term investments i would say so we we, we then uh, the sebi as well as rbi is accountable to the ministry of finance then we have amfi amfi is a very important organization as, as well as uh, mfi mutual funds is concerned so in india i say i say that we have 44 uh, mutual funds and all these 44 amcs are members of the uh, amfi amfi is the association of uh, mutual funds in india so they are a self regulatory organization that is that they itself has formed an organization but they are very uh, strict in regulations and all they recommend and promote best uh, pract business practices and code of conduct they also they have awareness programs they disseminate information and carries out studies or research on the mutual fund industry then we have of course we have income tax regulations governing mutual funds industry in india and similarly amfi is actually association of mutual fund investors that is they consider of trust they consider the amcs and all so the investors also there is an investors association it also functions as a self regulatory organization so this is the regulatory framework on how a mutual fund works in india so structure of mutual fund so many of us maybe know just so, so that we can say that the mutual funds snehit can i interfere so that we can say that the mutual fund investments are safe right because there are surveillance uh, mechanism uh, so uh, with the surveillance mechanism so everything uh, uh, going on this industry will be uh, supervised by the regulators always so uh, we can yes. uh, say that uh, nobody's money will be uh, will not be uh, looted uh, because everything uh, conducted in the mutual fund industry has been safe so that uh, there are more investment in the last uh, couple of uh, years we witnessed that there is a lo lot of investment which came out uh, to this sector mutual funds because people are you you might have experienced about advertisements of mutual funds and there is a disclaimer statement uh, saying in the last uh, mutual funds are subject to market risk and please read the offer document carefully before investment so even though that uh, many people are in because uh, as a beginner uh, to the stock market the mutual fund uh, will be the safe uh, platform to investment then after uh, reading uh, the mutual funds uh, through the mutual funds about the sector and they can be directly entered into the market so a beginner's uh, platform is mutual fund i would say right yes sir yes sir absolutely because the thing is that uh, there is a presumption that mutual funds are risky the, the why people lose money in mutual funds is they don't do not have awareness means they are not actually the mutual funds they are not looting our money that it happens on your uh, uh, when you do not make investment decisions on proper analysis and that is why we lose money and actually that advertisements are perfect because they uh, people lose money because they do not make any investments based on analysis or something they, lack of awareness they go and invest on some seeing some uh, investment tips or something so that is the primary reason why mutual funds many people consider it as risky but it is one of the actually uh, i would say it is one of the as you said that is one of the safest one because it is because even we do not need proper we need just need to have an idea on how our we need not need to analyze each and every aspect of each and every one each and every company which the mutual fund has invested so it is a very actually safe and safe bet for beginners yeah exactly so that uh, people are uh, uh, beginning they 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 all intended to begin with the mutual funds uh, and you know there are schemes the, they are giving 200 times means uh, almost double uh, their investment uh, even some small caps and mid caps providing uh, uh, more returns than the last cap even though that is there is a risk factor associated with but the market is moving up always so that uh, there is no not much risk associated with investment in mutual funds because they they have yes. had a mechanism of professional investment they, they 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 have every weapons tools and techniques for the investment so they understand the pulse of the market so whatever money invested will be uh, may be safe always but sometimes the market crashes uh, you know these market crashes uh, may badly influence the mutual funds but uh, so far the economy is uh, i mean the indian stock market is good enough to say that there will not be a market crash and there is a strong support in the market so we would uh, we would say that uh, the mutual funds investment are, are safe
Yes, sir. Yes, correct. Exactly. So yeah, um, coming into the structure of mutual fund, that uh, many of us maybe know uh, may know the outlook of mutual fund, but we need to uh, look into how in background mutual fund works. So for that, I will be. So we have five inter not intermediaries, five parties who are involved in the functioning of a mutual. Fund. The first one is the sponsor. Sponsor is a very uh, important one because the thing is that he is the one who sets up the mutual fund. So sponsor, I would say that it is like. A sponsor for him for the mutual fund is like the promoter to the company. So sponsor is functions like a promoter who has conceived the idea of the setting up of a, a mutual fund. And he it is a principal body who brings capital as per the guideline issued by SEBI to start a mutual fund. So what he does is that he sets up a trust. So as I in the first slide itself, the mutual funds are established as a trust. So every mutual fund is a trust. So sponsor creates this trust and the trust is created by sponsor and the tr and he appoints a trustees are appointed and these trustees they manage the operations of the trust the trustees job uh, is primarily to ensure that all the funds are managed as per the defined objectives and investors in it so here that term in the other defined objective that is a very important term each and every mutual fund has their own defined objective in and it is very clearly mentioned is then in their offer and all so the trustee's job is to ensure that the mutual fund works as per their defined objective and the investor's interest is protected. Third party involved in this is the AMC. AMC again is appointed by the trust. So uh, in that case, is trustee appoints the AMC and the primary function of AMC is that the to manage the funds of the investors and in return, they, they get a fee to manage the fund. That is a mutual funds trust. They invest in various uh, assets, but they need a party to manage these funds because they do they, they, they are not interested with the management of funds. So they appoint an AMC and they manage the funds. Then we have custodians. Custodians actually in, in classes we have studied what are custodians and their primary functions. But in this case, the, their primary function is that safekeeping of the investors' funds. Asset management companies manage their funds, they invest in various asset portfolios, but custodians they keep the safekeep of the investors' fund. And securities to ensure that it would be used for internet purposes. Then, uh, as we need a, a transfer agent, we call it as RTA popularly. So, RTA's job is that mutual funds also there are tra transfers, clearing, and settlements, and all right. So, they so RTA's job is to manage the back end operation of the mutual fund and managing investors' transaction requests and other related. So, that is uh, so regarding the purchase or redemption of a subscription of mutual funds. So these are the parties involved in a mutual fund sponsor trust and trustee as the same amc asset management company custodian register and transfer agent so this is a diagram showing it sponsor sets up the mutual fund trust the trustees managed with trustees trustees the trust appoints two parties that the custodian and the amc custodians safety the uh, uh, securities amcs manage the assets and we have rta uh, registrar and transfer agent for the subscription uh, for uh, accepting subscription orders or redemption orders. So these are the uh, parties in it. For example, I can say that usually the thing is that if I would say that we have a mutual fund called IDBI mutual fund. Uh, so IDB, there is an IDBI bank limited. So IDBI bank limited has set up this IDBI mutual fund. So IDBI bank will be the sponsor. IDBI mutual fund will be the mutual fund trust. And Usually, even though we say that trust, AMC, custodian, these are not single persons or them. Usually, custodian, AMCs, mutual fund trust, all this will be set up as companies. So, if, as as far as IDBI mutual fund is concerned, they have a company called IDBI M of Trustee Company Limited. So, this is the trustee. They also have an AMC called IDBI Asset Management Limited. So, IDBI Bank has an IDBI mutual fund. They have a trustee company. They have an AMC. So, it is a connected one. And as far as IDBI is concerned. They previously had uh, they registered as Carvey Computer Share Private Limited after due to some reasons Carvey has stopped their operations. And as custodian, IDBI they have the um, Stock Holding Corporation of India Limited and Bank of Nova Scotia. So this is a I wanted to give you an example how mutual fund structures. Going to the types of mutual funds. So these are very important concepts from from starting here because um, there are some types which I'll be explaining in the next one. But the thing is that you might be thinking these are theoretical concepts. These are not that required for but for trading or some investments. But I would say that here I was also not aware much aware of mutual funds. But the thing is that each and every term like this open ended, close ended, these 
terms have specific meaning in mutual funds that is very very much important that you need you have an uh, knowledge on these ter terminologies so first one is that open ended and closed ended open ended means that there is unlimited units in that and simply i can say in lay layman's language i would say that it is open ended means unlimited and closed ended means there is a limited units but the thing is that uh, open ended can uh, open ended shares can be purchased on any transaction day whereas closed ended transaction closed ended mutual funds they can be only purchased on the nfo nfo is new fund offer in in mutual funds we say new fund offer in shares it's very much similar to the ipo in shares so the thing is that uh, in open ended we can purchase it only on that any we can purchase it on any transaction day but whereas closed ended uh, mutual funds we can only purchase it on the NF new fund offer and redemption so this is a terminology here comes different because we don't say we sell mutual funds we redeem mutual funds so it can be again open ended can be redeemed on any uh, transaction day but whereas in closed ended schemes these we, there is a maturity date for um, units and it can be only redeemed on those maturity dates in open ended even though we say it is can be redeemed on any transaction there is a specified type of of mutual fund ELSS equity link saving scheme it is a tax saving scheme that i will explain in types but they usually have a lock in period lock in period means they, they usually differs from different till that period, end of that period we cannot uh, redeem it since open ended schemes we can purchase and redeem it on any transaction they open ended schemes are considered highly liquid whereas closed ended schemes we, as i said we can only purchase in the nfo and can be redeemed only at maturity we consider it as a low uh, liquid asset so again, uh, another classification of mutual funds, like direct funds, direct funds, is also a very important classification uh, because this is also very important terminology when it comes to investments. So in uh, simply, I can say that regular, uh, we have already studied this trade and all, right, wholesaler, retailer and all. So it is something like that. Regular pla regular plans is that it is sold through a wholesaler and direct with uh, the company, it's the uh, AMC directly sells it. That is simply, I can tell it. So. In regular plans, we have we have a distributor, whereas in direct schemes, the AMC directly sells the mutual funds units. So the thing is that since we have a distributor, uh, the term expense ratio I will explain in, in the latest. But at this point, just understand that in regular there is higher expenses. Expense ratio I will explain it. But we have in regular plans we have higher expenses. That is because it's common sense. Uh, since we have a distributor, we need to pay him commission. So it is it is not normal that the expenses involved in regular plans would be higher. In direct plans, we do not have an intermediary called distributor. So thus, the, we have low expenses in direct plans. And uh, again, when coming to returns, regular plans usually have lower returns. That is because we have uh, it is common, right? Because we have expenses, higher expenses are the so the investors get will get lower returns whereas coming to direct plans we do not have an intermediary or distributor we do not have to pay him anything so the expenses are low uh, eventually the we get higher returns as well so these are some classifications of mutual funds and i will show you the relevance of it in the later part so categories of mutual fund this is also very important because uh, I, as i said in mutual funds is not equity or debt we have various types of instruments involved in that so each, for example, in equity to itself, there are various categories like large cap, uh, multi cap, diversified, small cap, and thematic like sector like we can say real estate funds, ELSS. It is a equity link saving schemes. It is oh, it is a it is like uh, tax funds. Then we have index and ETFs. Hybrid is that it is a combination of uh, we can say that it's a combination of equity and debt. It we have uh, balanced hybrid. We have monthly investment plans hybrid. We have ca uh, capital protection funds. For debt itself, we have different types of categories that liquid, ultra short term, short term income, guilt, government securities, fixed maturity plans. We have commodity mutual funds. So there are various categories, but uh, here uh, categories are also very important, but we need to give importance to investment objectives. So, uh, I have said that each and every mutual funds has their own invest investment objective. Like uh, we can say that some are income oriented objectives. So income oriented schemes, they try, they, offer fixed income to investors they try to offer fixed income so it is it usually consists of like government securities and money market insurance which yield fixed income returns then we have that like growth oriented schemes so growth oriented schemes they offer funds fund offer the growth potentialities uh, associated 
uh, with investment in capital market and we can say that they give high source of income by way of dividend or like a rapid uh, capital appreciation so they are good quality scripts which offer high growth then there is hybrid schemes which is a combination they they, they try to give uh, a regular income as well as they try to give you a higher growth rate then we have high growth which is that like blue chip scripts or something like that then we have tax saving scheme that you might be aware that in uh, tax regulations we have various deductions available so there are some like ELS as equity linked savings schemes is one of them so we have pension schemes so these thing comes under tax scheme so each and every scheme has their own objective they try to fulfill that objective we have real estate funds real estate funds they um, these are uh, real estate funds are close under mutual funds and which they invest predominantly in the real estate and properties we have special schemes special schemes or index schemes index schemes so index schemes uh, it is like <coughs> they this category includes index scheme that uh, they try to uh, replicate the performance of a particular index means they try to have the same performance as an index like we can say it is like sensex or it is the nifty 50 or there are other sectoral schemes as well sectoral ind indices and they replicate this indices and there are other schemes also these are the major i would say this are some of them there are various objectives of the like offshore funds or uh, uh, ETF, a very important thing, ETF, a exchange traded funds. So there are various types. So uh, as, as Sir has already expressed while in his conversation, he has already told that the advantages of mutual funds is primarily because of the professional management, because they have a professional team to look after the schemes. They, are, they have skilled professionals who are backed by the dedicated investment research team, which analyzes the uh, performances and prospects of companies. And again, coming to diversification, also it is also an advantage of mutual funds because mutual funds invest in number of companies across uh, cross section of industries and sector. So it is un it is unrealistic that all the investments, all the industries will go down at the same time. So we have an opportunity of hedging as well. So they uh, they have a return potential again over a medium or to long term. Mutual funds have potential to provide a higher return as they invest in a diversified uh, basket of selected securities. And I would say they are also very transparent because investors get regular information on the uh, value that is net asset value that I will explain the term terminology of net asset value of their investment in addition to disclosure uh, on the specific investments made by the scheme. So even though I have now mentioned of the positive side of the earth, but there are also some uh, risks that is not looting because each and every investment opportunity has a, their own risk. So because in some mutual funds, I would say that there are excessive diversification of portfolio and this excessive diversification is also not good for the as far as investment concerned. because we lose the focus on the securities of the key segments like that. We give some funds give too much concentration on blue chip securities. It is also not a proper because usually these blue chip securities, they are already saturated ones and we have uh, some, of course, there are unresearched for forecasts on income. We have uh, there are some fund managers who are unaccountable. So there are various types of uh, or there are maybe under there are various funds and there may be underperformance in comparison to peer groups. So there are risks involved, but still it is a very in, uh, interesting and very safe bet for beginners. So coming uh, here, I will give you other terminologies which you need to give importance. That is, there are two terminologies which I've already mentioned. That is the NAV and the expense ratio. So let's first look into what is NAV. NAV, it, it uh, in shares we have uh, the price, right? And it is very easy to find out. We can just go to the exchange. It is already available. So that is how we can analyze the performance of the equity. But similarly for mutual funds or mutual fund units, there is a term called NAV. NAV is the market value of the securities held by the scheme. It is a total market value of the uh, securities held by the scheme and mutual funds invest the money collected from investors in the securities market since market value of uh, securities that is that uh, securities like even equity or something like that so these things ke keeps on changing similar thus nav also varies on the day to day basis so how this calculate how this calculate is the nav per unit is the market value of securities or scheme divided by the total number of units of the scheme that on a particular day the only difference is that in equity, the price keeps on varying and each and every minute or second, this keeps on changing. But as far as NAV is concerned, there is nothing like that. We will get it calculated by the end of the day. So only here it is mentioned. Unlike stocks, where the price is driven by the market and changes from minute to minute, 
mutual funds don't declare NA, NAVs throughout the day. So instead, what in mutual funds do is that uh, all, uh, NAVs of all mutual funds are declared at the end of the trading day after the markets are closed in accordance with the SEBI mutual funds regulations. In this, it is the 1996 regulations. So uh, further, as per SEBI mutual fund regulations, for all the mutual funds scheme other than li liquid funds, the mutual funds units are allotted on a prospective NAV. So that is the future NAV and the NAV that would be declared at the end of the day based on the closing market value of the securities held in respect. There are cutoff timings for that. that I will, I think it is there in the next slide. Yes, here NAV, the thing is that uh, in, I, I have already told that NAVs are only declared by the end of the day. So there comes a question on we, what NAV it should we take the same day NAV or we should we take the next day NAV. So there are, it depends on again the type category of scheme you have chosen. For example, if it is equity oriented schemes and the purchase value is less than 2 lakhs, if you have made the uh, purchase before 3, 3 p.m., you will get the same day NAV. But if it is after 3 p.m., it goes on to the next business day NAV. And if it is the value is more than 2 lakhs, uh, you uh, NAV of the business day on which the funds are available. When the, fund, the day on which the funds are available, that NAV would be calculated. For redemption, when it comes to sale, so this is for purchase and switching. For redemption, for sale, it is if you, whether it is, the value is not considered here. If, it, if you put the order before 3 p.m., you get the same day NAV calculated. Uh, but after the, uh, 3 p.m., you get the next day business NAV. So this is for equity oriented and debt funds. For liquid funds, again, there is a change for purchase. It, previous day NAV if funds are realized on the same day. Or otherwise, and the timing also there is a change. Here it is 2 p.m. Or NAV of the previous NAV of the day previous to the funds realized after 2 p.m. When it comes to sale also, the same thing happens. If, but time changes again to 3 p.m. But here, if you put the before 3 p.m., the NAV of the day immediately preceding the next business day is taken account. And if you put the uh, order after 3 p.m., NAV of the day preceding from submission. So this, this is a very important thing, NAV cutoff timeline. Because based on this only, your NAV will be considered. Because NAVs are only declared by the end of the day. Now, another important terminology. One is over NAV, so next one is the expense ratio. Uh, while explaining about that regular and direct, I have already told that in regular, we have a higher expense. So uh, mutual funds also, they charge fees too. Because they do not do this for charity, right? They Mutual funds, they charge fees for managing the investor's money. So there are various uh, expenses incurred by the mutual fund trust like uh, fee. they have to pay uh, fees to like uh, registrars and transfer agents. They have to pay fees to the auditors, they have to be custodians. So they need to charge these fees. They have asset management exceptions. If it is a regular scheme, they have distributors. They need to pay commissions to them or they have other selling expenses, including advertising expenses, expenses on investor communication account statements or dividend so listing fees and depository fees so there are various expenses incurred by the uh, uh, mutual fund so they need to collect this amount for the investors That's the, that is the term called expense ratio when it comes to expense ratio i will explain now under sebi mutual funds regulation 1996 mutual funds are permitted to incur charge certain operating expenses they have operating expenses for managing mutual funds like sales marketing advertising expenses administrative expenses transaction costs custodian fees audit fees so these things are uh, actually they are calculated on a percentage of the net asset so nav is actually nav is the amount after deducting the expense ratio so this is commonly referred to as expense ratio in short expense ratio is the cost of running and managing a mutual fund which is charged to a scheme the expense ratio is calculated here is the important term calculated as per the percentage of the schemes NAV. So the daily NAV is disclosed after deducting the expenses. So the, the NAV which is disclosed after the trading day is that it is after deducting the uh, NAV. So the thing is that they have a direct relationship. Uh, that's, that's the T uh, expense ratio has a direct bearing on a schemes NAV. The lower the expense ratio, the higher the NAV. They have a direct bearing on the schemes NAV. So uh, TER is an important term because it depends on how much NAV you get. So these are the things uh, I wanted to share on mutual funds. And coming to the uh, settlement of mutual funds here. I will now we have carried on the basics of mutual. So mutual fund usually we commonly we have a T uh, similar to the equity also equity we have T plus two. But again since we in mutual funds we have various categories that is that I that is that income 
income or growth or hybrid i mean in equity hybrid debt or commodity there are various uh, categories of mutual funds so it depends on the mutual fund but uh, category but primarily it depends usually most commonly it is t plus 2 like the settlement of mutual funds is carried by a in and if it is done through nsc it is done by nsc clearing only and they have through the depository and bank interface so all requests for subscription subscription is purchase and redemption is sale are settled on an individual basis and only to the extent of funds once paid by the participants so when it comes to uh, receipt and transfer of funds for subscription when it comes to subscription when you purchase it you, it is done on two t plus one basis and for uh, redemption that is receipt and transfer of mutual funds for redemption is done on t day and is conducted for trans units and demitters but again in the last as i told previously that it primarily depends on the category of mutual funds it varies from like there are the transfer of funds for redemption is carried out on t plus 1 or t plus 2 t plus 3 even there are two plus till t plus 7 depending upon the category of the funds which you have chosen so this is about the again about the settlement and that comes to the end of the part of mutual fund so if you have any questions you can ask me uh, snahid i have a question uh, uh, so the mutual funds are uh, very uh, good for the mutual funds are the market, financial services which are very good for the beginners to enter the capital market because the beginners they don't know how to uh, move along with the portfolio or they have to uh, they they don't know how to build a portfolio and they have to check the information on the companies and all so the, uh, it is better to invest through mutual funds uh, so what are the cost associated cost factors uh, can you compare the cost factors uh, while, uh, while investing in mutual funds and uh, while investing in the stock uh, you are telling about this uh, as per investors is concerned how much cost involved in cost of investment uh, transaction yes, sir. charges yes sir yes sir okay but the thing is that um, it again it also it varies on the type of mutual funds you choose here but again mutual fund charges it depends on how much you get uh, on sebi guidelines as they they have clearly mentioned about the mutual funds fees and expenses for a transaction for for new investors the first thing is that they need to pay a amount called uh, initiation fee that is uh, that comes around 150 rupees and for investors I think the voice is breaking. Okay, so, okay, yeah. So, um, so uh, the thing, but as far as individual in schemes, uh, individual investors is concerned, so they, they, I have read about that for equity schemes, they charge about a 2.5 percentage. They have mutual fund charges for equity schemes, and for debt schemes, they are charging a 2.25 percentage. So because that limit, when I have gone through the charges, the thing is that the limit is very high because they have kept a limit up to 100 crore. So t usually individual investors, they will not be investing, of, I don't think they'll be investing more than 100 crores. For, so they have kept it at 2.25 percentage for equity and for debt schemes, it is for 2.25. When it comes to uh, a bracket of 100 to 300 crores, it is like for, for equity schemes, it is charged at 2.25 percentage and for debt schemes, it is charged at 2 percentage. So. Okay, one more question uh, I have. Uh, uh, have you heard about exchange traded fund, ETFs? Yes, sir, ETF, yeah. And what is I the difference between these exchange trader funds and mutual funds? Because some of the people are confusing with this. Exchange trader funds are also considered to be mutual funds. But what is the fact yes, uh, uh, which is uh, and which is different between the exchange trader funds and mutual funds? Sure, sir, sure, I will explain it. So the thing is that ex mutual funds trust which i have explained it right now that these are not listed on a these are not traded on an exchange whereas etf it is a tie it, it is i would say it is a category of mutual fund these kind of things it is a, it is also a cluster of different uh, securities merged together in a um, simple fund and it is traded on a stock exchange 
so they the, the thing is that the main objective of the thing is that uh, they offer an array of investment strategies at low cost and is not limited but the difference i would say between a uh, etf and mutual fund mutual funds are not traded on exchange whereas etfs are traded on exchange but the attractiveness of etf increases is based on the tax efficiency of etf because when i have read about etf the thing is that for etf you have to only pay taxes when you sell the shares but whereas when it comes to mutual funds you have to pay a tax as long as they have the holdings and again when it come to etf you have very low fee as compared to mutual funds because but only thing is that you need to have a dmat account and you can tra trade you need to have a dmat account that expenses again on discount brokers they have come up, uh, they have lower charges for them but mutual funds expense ratio is higher and uh, etf is very similar to a, i would say is very similar to a stock because that they have they, they have, like stock there Yes, also exactly, it is equal to stock. We can trade in the uh, during the market times. It it has open yes. price and yes. low price, high price. We can be able to try. Uh, and its price is moving along with the uh, index. Uh, means, uh, for example, if uh, Nifty Fifty ETF, it is uh, closely associated with the Nifty Fifty stocks. If the Nifty Fifty advances, the ETF uh, advances. If the NFT fifty declines, uh, the ETF declines, right? Yes, sir. So in the screen, I have shown you yeah. now. It is actually Nippon India ETF Gold Bees. So in Nippon India, usually the ETFs are charged, termed as Bees, benchmark traded, benchmark exchange security, something like that. So the, it is very similar to a stock mark, stock exchange. Their values keep on changing. So now it is quarter at forty one point four zero. So this is Gold Bees. Similarly, you have mentioned about since you have mentioned about Nifty Bees again. It is also in Nippon India ETF Nifty Bs. It is both traded on NSE as well as BSE. So this is how an ETF works. It is very similar to a stock. It keeps on. It is has time minute to minute variations in price and all. Nifty Bs now uh, it is quarter at 170. Uh, Nifty Bs actually usually the thing is that they, they uh, I found that Nifty Bs are usually quarter at at the at one tenth of the value of the Nifty 50. you should somewhere around 1 nifty so it is a very nifty etf is also especially nifty bees and all it's also very good in uh, very easy rather easier than mutual funds it is a very easy investment for beginners so uh, usually uh, i know this uh, thing but uh, for the sake of others i am asking this question this uh, etf segment uh, private players are also being allowed to be listed in the stock market or it's fully owned by nifty i mean uh, stock exchange products Uh, but so private nippon is a private yeah right yeah, yeah. there are various some uh, people uh, had a misconception that it is uh, the ctf is fully on by means the uh, on product of uh, stock exchange stock exchange no no it is not an on product of exchange similar like see, nippon india has mutual funds also so it uh, it is a, a category of actually it is a category of mutual funds means they, they, they just list it on like they we list ex companies in um, stock market like that mutual funds are listed on a uh, trading platform uh, excel right okay any any questions from others uh, please ask uh, because about mutual funds and the, the because very important product you know uh, for the beginners to start with the stock market investment because uh, if, if somebody Unaware about the company's fundamental technical analysis, they can easily uh, invest through mutual funds. Uh, we will get better returns. So, anybody have questions? Uh, please ask. Any questions? If no questions, uh, we can uh, 